And hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Reed Finlayson. I'm a psychiatrist and a specialist in uh, addiction medicine. And I work at uh, Vanderbilt University Medical Center. And uh, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about my own personal experience with uh, benzodiazepines uh, and, and uh, uh, th then uh, turn the subject over to uh, how to manage withdrawal from benzodiazepines. Uh, something that I have uh, considerable experience uh, uh, with, at least in the acute uh, setting. Um, I want to emphasize that uh, what what I'm saying to you uh, it should not be construed as professional uh, medical advice or diagnosis or, or treatment for anyone. Uh, it's, it's always uh, important that you seek the advice of your own physician who has examined you and is familiar with your situation or another qualified health provider uh, with any uh, questions that you have about a, a, a medical condition. So um, uh, I'm going to share with you that, that I have lived experience with severe mental illness and also with addiction. Uh, I, um, I was prescribed uh, benzodiazepines many years ago uh, as a result of having some uh, mental health issues uh, to help me to settle and sleep at night. Um, I, I uh, took um, the, uh, the sleeping pill for three or four weeks. And uh, when I was uh, uh, doing well, uh, tried to stop it and uh, uh, wound up having uh, much more difficulty uh, sleeping and uh, also a lot of anxiety that I hadn't uh, experienced before. So I have, uh, I, I have not taken benzodiazepines for uh, extended periods of time. And I, I try very hard not to prescribe them for any more than three or four weeks because uh, uh, not only does that um, uh, seem to be the, the absolute outside length of time that they can be helpful, um, but, um, but also because that is what is uh, directed in all the medical literature having to do with the benzodiazepines in their package insert and, and in, in all the pharmacology books that they're not intended to be used uh, long-term. So I, um, a number of years later, I, I was uh, observing a, uh, a, a clinic that treated anxiety at the University of Toronto and I was involved as an observer for a study that was being carried out uh, between Toronto and London, England, uh, looking at um, uh, comparing alprazolam, which is marketed here as Xanax, uh, uh, comparing whether, uh, whether it helped or hindered a treatment. And the expectation was, because at the, at the at the time, it had been marketed as an antidepressant, not just as a, a sedative hypnotic uh, tranquilizer agent, but also because it was re reported to have energizing and uh, antidepressant effects. And it was the expectation that, uh, that it, it would hands down be better than doing nothing for uh, uh, people with panic attacks and, and uh, anxiety and agoraphobia. So they had, uh, I'll uh, show you some of the uh, results from that uh, study. Uh, it was in 1993 uh, and I've uh, marked in yellow where the, <coughs> the, the uh, treatment uh, did worse when, when uh, alprazolam was involved. So the AE group is alprazolam and exposure or live exposure to the, the the, the things that made people fearful. That's the basis of uh, cognitive behavioral therapy now. Uh, AR is alprazolam and relaxation. Uh, PE is placebo. That means an inert substance that looked and tasted like alprazolam, but uh, had no uh, effect. It was essentially inert. Um, placebo is a Latin word, which means I will please. And it's, it's a term used for uh, a sham treatment or, or, or uh, treatment that we can compare active treatments to and, and learn whether they're effective or not. So PE is uh, placebo and, and exposure and 
uh, PR is uh, placebo and relaxation. A relaxation uh, was not particularly effective uh, for uh, uh, panic attacks, but exposing people to the to the uh, situations that made them fearful uh, really was helpful. And and we now know that whether that's uh, a, a phobic kind of uh, a fear, uh, by phobic I mean a specific fear of a, a spider or heights or uh, 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 crowds, so-called agoraphobia, after the Greek word uh, marketplace, uh, or whether the fear is uh, related to the idea of uh, uh, being unable to accomplish something or unable to avoid something. So it's whether it's an actual situation or imagined situation, uh, the, um, the uh, an anxiety does best with uh, cognitive behavioral treatment for the imaginary and, and for exposure treatment for the real. And this is a rather complicated slide that, that, that shows that uh, alprazolam did not really uh, improve uh, the, the, the situation in terms of the way the Raiders scored it, in terms of uh, avoiding uh, fearful objects and uh, uh, pl uh, places, uh, or uh, they didn't do better with their social adjustment or work adjustment and they had more uh, uh, panic attacks. And it's summed up pretty well in this, uh, in this next slide. This is kind of a summary slide of, 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 the, of the whole study. And, and what it shows uh, on, on the, uh, the vertical axis uh, are the number of people who survived without having a relapse. Uh, and then on the, uh, on the horizontal axis shows the weeks of the study. Now, I, I want to preface this and, and, and uh, I tell you that most of the studies of the effectiveness of benzodiazepines uh, are limited to six, eight, 10, and occasionally 12 weeks. They rarely are studied uh, beyond that. And so what, what you can see if you look up from 10 or 12 weeks is that you know, there's not a great deal of uh, scatter between the, uh, between the results. The people uh, uh, on this uh, with, um, uh, alprazolam and, and relaxation were, were in the same sort of uh, area, although the people with uh, alprazolam and exposure uh, were a little bit worse. But look what happens as time goes on. There's some initial improvement with everything, but once you get past um, uh, six, eight, 12 weeks, and you get out to 38 weeks, which is, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 several months, um, what happens is the people that are taking alprazolam have a worse outcome. Their anxiety is worse. And, and uh, the, the people who just uh, did it with relaxation, they're the next worse. The people who actually had the treatment like CBT or exposure uh, uh, to the things that frighten them uh, did the best and, 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 and did the best uh, in, in, in the long run. Now the, 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 the trouble with uh, al alprazolam is it's basically an anesthetic agent. It, it, it just dampens down fear uh, and uh, makes it so that people don't connect with one another uh, as, as well. <clears throat> we often compare it to the effect of alcohol. And, and we know that uh, uh, people who are addicted to alcohol uh, can substitute uh, uh, benzodiazepines for alcohol and, and get the same kind of effect. And the other striking thing in late, later studies that I, I won't uh, uh, go into uh, is, is that uh, Marx and Swinson and their, their colleagues, when they, when they looked at these people, they, these people believed that the drug was helping them. And they believed it because when they stopped, uh, they, they had trouble sleeping. They had trouble with anxiety. And so they, in, in their minds, they thought that, that they had gotten better uh, because of the drug, and when they stopped the drug, it made things worse. And, and that is the, 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 the crux of the problem with, with uh, uh, benzodiazepine uh, drugs uh, long term. Now, the, the, the worst part of the story, uh, I'll, I'll try and share with you quickly. Uh, because I was observing the study, I was invited to go to Switzerland. Uh, it's the only time I've crossed the uh, Atlantic uh, ocean in a in a in a first class seat, 
and I stayed in a, a, a luxurious hotel in Switzerland. Uh, and I went to this uh, a conference, uh, all paid for by the uh, pharmaceutical manufacturers. And uh, I can tell you they did not appreciate uh, having this uh, study presented. In fact, they tried to prevent it getting published. Uh, it has never been published in North America. This is, this is only in the British Journal of Psychiatry way back in 1993. And I followed this literature fairly closely ever since. Uh, and I can tell you a study like this of this length has never been repeated. And uh, my other interest is, is really in addiction medicine. And I can tell you that there are very few studies uh, showing the effect of, um, uh, 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 of uh, substituting uh, uh, benzodiazepines for alcohol uh, because uh, it, it, uh, it, 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 is, it is not a, a substitute for, for alcohol and it, it doesn't make uh, people healthy. In fact, my experience with people who are trying to remain sober is, is very often they're, they're prescribed benzodiazepines and then they relapse to alcohol use when the, when the prescription runs out. So what are the benzodiazepines? They're, they're a whole collection of drugs. These are a lot of trade names of uh, drugs in the benzodiazepine class. And uh, don't get me wrong, they're not bad. They're, they, in fact, they can be very useful. They can be very, very helpful short term. Uh, they're often used as, um, anti, uh, as anesthetics uh, because they, they quickly sedate people. They're very safe. Uh, they also interfere with memory and, and uh, people don't remember uh, the, the procedures that, that, that are uh, being carried out uh, surgically on their bodies. So that they're, they're very, very uh, useful drugs. Uh, the, the, the difficulty uh, with them uh, comes when they're, um, when they're used long term. And I've been in practice long enough that I've seen most of these drugs uh, come into the market and be uh, advertise as not, uh, not causing problems, they're the answer to sleeplessness, uh, the answer to anxiety, uh, your patients will love you. And uh, in fact, uh, I, I would say uh, rather cynically that there's no faster way to build a practice than, than to get people uh, to take drugs which they can't stop taking. Uh, the, the, uh, the Z drugs are very similar, act in the similar ways. They're, they're, they tend to be shorter acting uh, but they're not a good solution to sleep uh, 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 unless they're just used occasionally. You know, it's probably safe to use one uh, a, a mild dose to get on a plane and cross the Atlantic uh, to avoid uh, jet lag, but I don't recommend that to my patients. Uh, uh, but a lot of people do uh, uh, use them short term like that. Um, it, um, it, 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 they're, they're, they're collectively known as, as uh, uh, benzodiazepines because they work on receptors in the brain that we call benzodiazepine uh, receptor agonists in, in the uh, 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 GABA and, and the glutamate uh, uh, systems of the central nervous system, primarily in the areas around the reward pathway and, and the limbic system. So, um, it's, it's very important to, to realize that uh, most of the use of benzodiazepines uh, does not create problems because a, a majority of people doesn't like the way they feel. They don't, you know, they don't remember things as well when they take them. They feel kind of uh, sleepy or there are other effects that go along with it. And, and, and they, 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 they don't like them and then they stop taking them. The problem is for some people, uh, it feels like they solved all their problems and they, they, they have a tendency to want to continue to, to uh, stay on the medication. But the problems in these uh, uh, drugs ar arise from the dependence that's created on them. It, it's, it's what, what happens in dependence is after a drug has been in the brain for three or four weeks, and it, you know, the time uh, varies with individuals and with the, with, with the drug involved, but the brain actually changes the number of receptors and uh, for, for many substances creates uh, a, a tolerance 
that doesn't happen quite so much with benzodiazepines, although rarely there are people who have to continue to increase the amount that they take. Uh, that's not usually the problem, but the, the, the changes in the brain chemistry create a dependence, which means when the drug stops, all the benefits uh, uh, are reversed. And, and, uh, and what, what the person experiences, if they had anxiety going in, it's often worse anxiety when they stop. If they had insomnia uh, uh, starting the medication, they tend not to sleep very well. And the longer they've taken the, 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 the benzodiazepine or, or Z drug, the, the worse it can be uh, uh, to, to stop them. And um, I would say that, that dependence and addiction are not the same thing, and that addiction is, uh, is, is rare with, with benzodiazepines. Addiction, uh, for me, is, is, is more when the out of control behavior uh, uh, or the out of control uh, sensations result in behavior, which is uh, uh, drug seeking and, and, uh, and can uh, uh, extend into criminality. But in, in actual fact, uh, addiction isn't bad either uh, when, when you really understand what's happened to the people involved. Uh, but but for for benzodiazepines, what we're what we're concerned about is is trying not to create a physi physiological dependence in their use, because of the difficulty it can be uh, uh, stopping them. And it it uh, for most people it seems to to relate to the length of time that they're they're taken. But that's not always true. So uh, I've uh, s said that the, 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 the risks of using benzodiazepines uh, tend to increase over time. Um, one of the things that benzodiazepines uh, do is depress people. Uh, I, I can tell you that uh, most uh, suicides, uh, uh, or, or a, a very large proportion of suicide behavior is, occurs in people who are taking benzodiazepines. And it's not necessarily uh, in an overdose situation, but it, excuse me, can be. Uh, an, a, another effect that, that uh, happens when people take uh, benzodiazepines for a long period of time is that they, they can't think as clearly. We call that discognition. Uh, it's not clear uh, if uh, uh, dementia results from um, taking benzodiazepines. But uh, taking benzodiazepines impairs cognition uh, in demented uh, people and, and may be involved in, in making it worse. That's actively being uh, researched now. And as I've said already, uh, it, uh, benzodiazepines do create dependence uh, and sometimes rarely uh, addictive behavior. Um, they're, they're, uh, uh, the, their mechanism associ is associated with uh, sensitizing the, recept the receptors in the brain with, with, uh, with a, a, a type of uh, kindling phenomenon that, that uh, occurs there. Uh, stopping benzodiazepines is associated with increased uh, uh, symptoms of anxiety. That includes uh, agoraphobia. Uh, uh, benzodiazepines are uh, contraindicated in, in the treatment of uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, which is a, classified as an anxiety disorder. Um, we, we know that uh, the, the results uh, of treating PTSD are worse with uh, benzodiazepine drugs on board, and uh, that when benzodiazepine drugs are, in, are, are prescribed to people with PTSD, that they have more thoughts of suicide and, and more suicide attempts. And so we get really concerned about the, the the, the long-term use of benzodiazepines in the severely mentally ill uh, and in just about every category, uh, uh, it, 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 they can make the situations worse. Um, benzodiazepine withdrawal is also uh, involved in neurological uh, uh, symptoms, often uh, really strange electric sensations, uh, uh, muscle spasms and uh, 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 discomfort and pain. Uh, and and uh, especially in the, the acute phase, somebody who stops benzodiazepines uh, uh, suddenly uh, can have uh, seizures. And um, that's one of the concerns that I work very hard to prevent when people are admitted to the hospital here. Um, 
uh, and have been taking benzodiazepines, uh, I generally feel that the benzodiazepines are making the situation worse and urge them to stop, but it's very important to try and uh, uh, minimize the withdrawal uh, uh, side effects or effects of withdrawal, uh, especially uh, 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 seizures. So the, uh, the, the, the problem that, that the uh, coalition has been more concerned about is, is where um, withdrawal symptoms persist and, and uh, seem to be uh, associated with uh, uh, injury to the central nervous system and, uh, and uh, a variety of, uh, uh, of uh, symptom pictures. So why do I recommend that uh, uh, people uh, consider stopping benzodiazepines? Um, well, the main thing is because they lose their efficacy. They, they stop working after a few weeks. And, and, it, and, and people shouldn't assume uh, that just because they're sleeping and feeling better on the, on the medication, that that's going to continue uh, 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 if they stay on the medication for, for a longer period of time. We, we're, we're studying uh, with the coalition the, the possibility that actually benzodiazepines make anxiety worse. Uh, it, it's it, it, it's not clear if it's the drugs or if it's it, if it's uh, the characteristics of the people who uh, take the drugs long term, uh, but th there there does seem to be an emerging literature and uh, uh, science on the on on the possibility uh, that benzodiazepines actually make things worse, and that would certainly fit with the experience uh, that that. Uh, uh, that, that I, I was party to at the, at the conference uh, in 1993 that I mentioned to you. Um, so the, the, the second thing is when people stop taking benzodiazepines, uh, it, it, it shouldn't be necessarily assumed that, that the symptoms that they're developing um, are, are uh, a, a, a symptom of a disorder like anxiety or uh, a depression or, or, or troubles thinking or having neurological symptoms. Uh, it, it, it may not be uh, a, a new disease. It, it, it may be uh, symptoms of protracted benzodiazepine withdrawal that the, the person is experiencing. So uh, again, I want to emphasize that, it, that people are uh, should be advised uh, not to take benzodiazepines for more than four weeks. And again, the coalition is working with the FDA to try and get a warning so that people have to be informed when benzodiazepines are, are prescribed that uh, it, they should be uh, discontinued before four weeks. Um, and, and that is because uh, there's a rarely much benefit afterwards. And as I've uh, I mentioned to you already, their ongoing use is associated with increases in, in depression and difficult to treat depression and uh, uh, death due to suicide or uh, occasionally uh, from uh, overdosing uh, of the drugs. And it doesn't have to be a suicide attempt. Uh, it, the, the benzodiazepines uh, make people forgetful. Uh, that, that's why the uh, uh, benzodiazepine rohypnol is, is known as the date rape drug. Uh, we know that's, you know, uh, it, it was um, uh, related drugs that uh, led to the death of uh, 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 Michael Jackson and many other uh, uh, people who, who were abusing drugs. So that the, the overdose can be intentional, but uh, very often it can be just forgetful that, oh, I've taken one. Oh, no, I can't remember if I took one or two. Well, I'll just take one or two more. And that can go on over a period of hours with, with uh, a, a fatal effect in the, in the vulnerable person. So there, there are a large number of uh, potential symptoms of uh, uh, injury uh, from uh, benzo benzodiazepine withdrawal. I'm not going to go through all of them because 140 different uh, types of symptoms have been postulated and, and, and are being actively uh, researched. Uh, some of them are, are unexpected. Um, psychological things like uh, depersonalization, 
uh, derealization, uh, uh, mania, uh, disinhibition certainly can happen with them. Um, and and um, they, they, have been, they have been associated in, in uh, occasional instances with violent crime. Uh, the, the, uh, the symptoms uh, associated with withdrawal uh, of benzodiazepines can be uh, feelings like electric shock, um, uh, uh, pain experiences, either, either generalized, centralized pain or peripheral uh, neuropathic types of pain. It can affect the sensory organs. Uh, uh, you, you, can, uh, you can have uh, a paresthesias or, or, or funny touch sensations, uh, odds, changes in, in uh, the ability to smell, to taste, sometimes uh, uh, visual symptoms, hearing uh, symptoms, and uh, uh, so sometimes uh, movement disorders, muscle jerks or myoclonic so sort of jerks that uh, have to be uh, examined by a neurologist with a, an electroencephalogram to tell whether they're uh, really uh, seizures or what are uh, known as uh, pseudo seizures that that is uh, muscle movement without uh, having the uh, a, a brain initiated but uh, remember that th these these uh, 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 drugs uh, infiltrate all the nervous uh, system both the uh, autonomic nervous system the peripheral nerves and the central nervous system so that uh, withdrawal symptoms could affect neurons uh, all throughout uh, the body and in uh, many other organs and, and uh, somatic symptoms like nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, constipation, and, and, and chest pain are, are, uh, are, are uh, certainly possible on, uh, on withdrawal. So uh, sometimes benzodiazepine withdrawal can be uh, confused with other things. Uh, the, the obvious one is anxiety and, and uh, sleeplessness and uh, uh, I've, I've already explained that, that, that the uh, drugs initially at least give the illusion of uh, sleep. It's not normal sleep. It's, it, it, it's, a, it, it's a kind of uh, uh, mild alcoholic blackout is, is, is the best way of describing what uh, sleep is on a benzodiazepine. It, it suppresses REM sleep and, and uh, uh, suppresses deep sleep uh, such that you don't have a normal sleep cycle. And, and, um, and, and yet if you take them for, for three or four weeks and stop sleeping, uh, the, the tendency is to believe that you're st you still have insomnia uh, and the drug is, is going to fix it if you keep taking it. Similar thing with anxiety, which I, 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 I won't uh, go into detail about again. So uh, what, what, what can happen with this uh, dependence on, on the uh, benzodiazepine is, is a need for the drug to feel normal or, or to suppress the, uh, the, the symptoms, which really are the symptoms that the, the, the person presented with initially, excuse me, only worse because they're complicated when you stop the drug uh, by the withdrawal symptoms. Uh, they can, the, the symptoms can mimic uh, so-called fibromyalgia or chronic fatigue syndrome or uh, myalgic encephalomyelitis, uh, all, all sorts of uh, uh, neurologic conditions uh, can be considered. Uh, it, it, it's even sometimes been confused with uh, early onset multiple sclerosis or Lyme disease or um, any, any type of somatic symptom disorder. Uh, and and uh, they, they are not uh, uh, somatic uh, uh, symptoms in, in the sense that psychiatrists use that term, because what, when we use that term, we mean uh, that, that all physiological uh, causes have been ruled out. Uh, but uh, what is not often appreciated is the with withdrawal symptom from benzodiazepines can produce uh, uh, symptoms that are very difficult to diagnose. Hey, Reed. Uh yeah. Just really quick, I think we're going to try to move on so everyone can get a chance to uh, ask their question. Um, I'm not really sure if this is a good sure. place for you to wrap it up or not, but maybe just a closing thought or something. Sorry, yeah, I know it's no, a that's a tough situation. Uh, no, no, that, that's absolutely fine. I was, I was uh, planning this stop, but um, 
you know, what, what, what I would say is, you know, as a psychiatrist and addiction specialist, I, I think it is really best to avoid taking these drugs, uh, except uh, in, in, in acute situations. I, I, I use them all the time to help people withdraw from alcohol, but in a very time limited way uh, and, 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 uh, and, and stop them after uh, 24 or 48 hours use, depending on, 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 the, uh, on the need. And, and uh, I will also say that I've, I've had several patients uh, that I have followed uh, with um, uh, uh, troubling symptoms from stopping benzodiazepines. Uh, I'll, I'll close just by briefly describing uh, one patient who was in her mid eighties and asked me to help her to get off benzodiazepines because she, she, uh, she was pretty dysfunctional. She was in a wheelchair. She, uh, she couldn't be up and around. She could hardly think straight. She, you know, her, her, her mental state was altered. And uh, it, it took uh, a couple of times in hospital and uh, well over a year, closer to 18 months of very, very slow titration on, on uh, Valium, also known as diazepine, the long-acting uh, benzodiazepine drug, to get her uh, uh, where she was comfortable uh, without benzodiazepine drugs. But I'll tell you, she, uh, the last time I saw her, saw her, she thanked me and she told me she was playing bridge outside with her friends, uh, something she hadn't been able to do in years. And, and uh, you know, she had been, she had been uh, uh, taking drugs like uh, uh, Xanax for uh, 25 or 30 years. Great. I'll stop thanks. there. Yeah, no, thanks a lot. We really, really all appreciate it. Um, so we're gonna move on now to the, the Q&A part. Um, I'm not sure how many people have questions. Um, like I said, if you want to, you can use the uh, raise hand function or the chat. chat. Um.